I need to insert a picture before I can show you how you can modify it. Let me go ahead and scroll down here. And I want to insert one right here where it talks about a dragon. Since I don't have a picture of a dragon, I'm going to go ahead and use Microsoft's clip art. As we learned in an earlier training video, to insert clip art, just come up here, click on the Insert tab, go to the Illustrations group. There it is, clip art. Go ahead and click on that. Opens up the clip art task pane, and it remembers what I was previously searching for, which was Christmas. Let me go ahead and delete that because we want to search for now. I drag on. And before I go ahead and click Go, I want to make sure that it includes the website or the content on office.com. And then as far as the uh, media file types go, let me go ahead and choose Illustrations. It's already set to that because I don't believe there's an actual picture of a dragon. So Illustrations will work. Let me go ahead and click Off and click Go. And let me choose my favorite one right here. Click on it to insert it. Give it a second. And then go ahead and close out of the task pane. And there we go. Now you can see that I've got a lot of white space above the dragon here and below. So if I want to go ahead and cut that out, or known as cropping, just go ahead and make sure the picture is selected because if it's not, you don't get the related contextual format tab. So select the picture. Now I know this is an illustration, but what I'm showing you here applies to both pictures and illustrations. So go ahead and select the picture or illustration on the format tab to the size group. There it is. Go ahead and click on the crop button. When you click on it, it adds these black handles here. All you have to do is go ahead and click on the one that you want to crop in and click and drag it down and it will bring the picture down, resize it so it's just above the head of the dragon. And I can go down at the bottom, click on that cropping handle, drag it in. Let me go ahead and scroll up. So the gray parts is the original size of the image and it shows you that, what you're cutting out and what the new image will be, which is about yay big. So if I like what I have cropped out or cut out, then just come up here and click on the button again to finish it. So now I have my new image here, or the size of it. Now if I made a mistake and I'm like, whoops, I didn't mean to crop off the top here, then come back up here, click on the crop button, and go ahead and click on that middle handle in my case and drag it all the way back up to the top to fill in the gray so it's back to the original size. And then when I'm finished, just come up here and click on the crop button again to crop that out. Now if I made a mistake and I couldn't get it right back to the original size, then come over here on the Format tab to the Adjust group, and then you see that button right there, Reset Picture. Go ahead and click on its corresponding drop-down arrow and say that you want to reset picture and size. Click on it, and it goes back to the original size, okay? In which case, I'll click on Crop again, and go ahead and click and drag that in, and click and drag the bottom in, and that looks good. Click on the Crop button. Now you have other crop options by clicking on the corresponding drop-down arrow. Of course, you have the Crop, which is the same as clicking on the button up here. So next is the crop to shape. You can go ahead and choose a shape that you want to crop it to, like a teardrop. So when you click on it, you can see it cuts off part of the dragon tail. So whatever part of the image doesn't fit within the shape gets cut. Now I can either go ahead and undo that, or of course click on the drop down arrow to reset the picture and the size. Click on reset picture, gets rid of that teardrop crop so I can see part of his tail now. Click on the crop drop down arrow again. You have aspect ratio, whether you want it as a square, a portrait, or a landscape, and the ratios. You also have the fill and the fit, where it resizes the picture so that the entire picture displays inside the picture area. Go ahead and click on it, and it resizes it so the actual picture, the proportion of it, where it had more height, you can see that now it doesn't show the crop. It actually fits within what I had cropped. Okay, I'll go ahead and hit undo. Next, you can go ahead and resize the picture if it's a bit too big or you want to make it bigger. You can do it one of a couple of ways. You can either go ahead and use one of these handles here, resizing handles, by hovering over the right middle handle, I can click and drag it to stretch it more horizontally, or you know, click and drag it in to shrink it up, or more vertically by using the top middle handle. Or if I want to go ahead and do it proportionally, where I'm not stretching it so it's more vertically or more horizontally, go ahead and hover over one of the corner handles and click and drag out or in, and you can see that it doesn't stretch out vertically or horizontally, but keeps it proportional. The other way to do it is numerically, if you don't want to click and drag, and do it manually by stretching those resize handles by coming up here to the size group and typing in either the width. You can see when you hover over it, you get the pop-up that says that's the width, and then this is the height. You can go ahead and type it in here, three, hit enter, or you can go ahead and click its expandable dialog box button on the size tab, he got the same height, 3 inches, there you go, 3 inches, and then width, 3.21, width, 3.21. And then you can see because I resized it, 
you can see that the height is 6% more than its original size, and the width is 20% less than its original size. So if I go ahead and click Reset, it restores it back to its original size. Click OK, and boom, there you go. Which, by the way, instead of going ahead and resizing it numerically here, you can expand the dialog box here, and if you resize it up here and say instead of 2.84, which is the height, and 4 is the width, if I say it's 3, and hit the tab key, notice how it readjusts the width so it can keep it proportional. It will do that within this window as long as this box is checked. Lock aspect ratio. If it's not checked and you uncheck it, what you do in one, like you can make it ridiculous, like 50, and hit the tab key. Okay, it's got to be between 0 and 22, so there is a limit. So if I type in 20, hit the tab key, it's not going to readjust and keep it proportional with the width. So it's going to be stretched, wow, really tall, vertically. In any case, let me go ahead and reset the picture, make sure that it's checked, locked aspect ratio, so what I do in one for the width, it adjusts it accordingly with the height or vice versa. Okay, let's go ahead and click OK. And then finally, when it comes to rotating the image, you can do it one of a couple of ways. You can either come up here on the Format tab to the Range Group and flip it. Click on the drop-down arrow to rotate it 90 degrees right, left, flip it vertically or horizontally so it's facing the other way to the left side of the document. Or you can see that green little handle up at the top. Hover over it. You can see that an arrow is coming around in on itself. When you click on it, you get a bunch of arrows, which means that it's now in movable mode or rotating mode. So if I go to the right, it tilts to the right, go to the left, and let me go ahead and put him on his two feet there and let go. And then click off in a blank area. Look, he's walking on his front two feet. Isn't that adorable? Let me go ahead and select it again. Now, when you go ahead and you rotate it by using the green handle, when I click on it, Notice that when I go to the right, how smooth it is. But if I hold down the Shift key, it does it in 15 degrees increments. So it snaps every 15 degrees. So I can go ahead and snap it right to pop. goes right there. Let go of the mouse, then the Tab key, and looks good to me. Now, if you want to adjust the brightness or the contrast of your picture, the brightness where you can make it brighter, or the contrast, well, the contrasting between two colors, where it's more defined if you increase the contrast, just come up here on the Format tab to the Adjust group, click on the Corrections drop-down arrow. You can choose some of the defaults here, Sharpen and Soften, you know, hover over it, see if it makes a difference there. There's the brightness and contrast there, where you can do, well, it looks like a plus 20% of brightness and a negative 20 on contrast, or go ahead and manually change it yourself. Click on Picture Correction Options, and over here, there you go. You can do your brightness by percentage, one points, two points, and so on. And contrast, you can also do the same here. And then when you're finished, you can close out and it'll be applied. Or you can go ahead and click reset so it sets it back to zero. Close out. How about the color? Click on the drop down arrow. Um, we've got the color there. You can, well, choose other options for color for saturation, color tone, recolor, or something in a, a single color like blue accent color one light. Click on that. Pretty simple. And then they have some artistic effects. You can choose one of these. Let me click off. Then they have the top button here, which is the compressed picture. When you click on it, it allows you to reduce the size of the picture. So if your picture in a document is, let's say, 10 megabytes, and the picture is 9 megabytes, well, it's probably a good idea to go ahead and reduce the size of the image. So if you need to email it to somebody, it doesn't take as long or take as much space on your computer. So you've got the compression options, and by default they're checked, where you can go ahead and apply this correction to this picture only, or uncheck it, and it'll apply to all the pictures throughout your entire document. And then this checked means that it will delete the cropped areas. As you recall, when we cropped the picture there, we had all this extra white space, that if we made a mistake, we can go ahead and uncrop it. Well, this is a permanent solution where we can't uncrop it. And so is why it reduces the size of the picture, because it doesn't remember or keep track of the extra space around that image. And then down below here, you can go ahead and set the uh, pixels per inch. Of course, the smaller the size, the reduction of the image quality, but at least the person gets it quicker. And if you need to have it to be print quality, then you want to choose the top one here. But I can't choose it here because it's not an option. The best that I can do is uh, 150 pixels per inch. Or I can just go ahead and use the document resolution, which is fine for me. Go ahead and click OK. And then it'll take effect once you save your document and close out. So the next time you open it back up, the size of your document should be reduced because you applied the compression to this image or other images throughout your document. And then finally, let me go ahead and scroll up. I'm going to shrink the size of my picture here by hovering over the lower right resizing handle and clicking and dragging and pushing it in. And notice how the text is either at the top or the bottom. 
I can go ahead and use the text wrapping feature that has the text wrap around it. Not just on the top or the bottom, but you know, it'd be nice to have the text to be on the right hand side of it. So, with your picture selected, come up here on the Format tab to the Arrange group, and there we go, Wrap Text. So it'll wrap the text around the image. But how? Well, you can choose Square. When you hover over it, it gives you a preview there. Do you like how the text is wrapping around it in a square format? Or you can choose Tight and see if it gets it any closer, or Through, top and bottom again, or behind the text, or in front of the text. So that way it cuts out the text, which doesn't make sense to me. So my favorite ones are square and tight. Let me go ahead and just do tight. Click off in a blank area and it looks pretty good. So that way I'm not wasting a bunch of white space right here. I can have the uh, text flow just around the picture. Of course you can also right click the image and go to wrap text and choose it from there. You can also go down to more layout options. You got your wrapping styles. You have wrap text on both sides, left only, right only, largest only. You can also set how close it is to the image. Right now it's about, for the left hand side, 0.13, the right hand side is 0.13. You can reduce that or increase it so it pushes it out further. Let's go to one inch, click OK, and you see how it pushed it out. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.